Hello and welcome to Tech World. Today we are going to talk about data center networking. In the recent years, internet companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon have built massive data center, each of housing tens to hundreds of thousands of hosts concurrently sporting many distinct cloud applications like in the e-business amazon's providing different services content servers like youtube akami apple microsoft providing services in research engine and data mining there's a google which is providing massive amount of services so why we need data center networking in data centers what are the challenges we have in the data center so we have the multiple applications in the data center uh, one data center is serving multiple applications and there's a large amount of clients in there let's take an example like youtube which is the second largest search engine which providing daily 20 million users uh, their services so such a large amount of clients are there uh, so data centers have to provide them their services so we re need uh, reliability in there and uh, such a if a, such a large amount of services uh, uh, and uh, the users to handle we have so we have to have uh, load balancing Avoiding processing large uh, processing so that uh, users haven't to wait for its requests so long and uh, there's a networking and uh, we have to deal with data bottleneck in the data centers uh, hosts are the working bees they provide uh, the content like web pages videos stored emails and uh, documents uh, and uh, they provide the massive amount of uh, distributed computation in the data centers so the hosts uh, in the data centers called blades and they resemble uh, like the pizza boxes and uh, generally community hosts uh, include uh, cpu memory and uh, disk storage Hosts uh, are uh, stacked uh, in a rack uh, and each rack uh, having uh, 20 to 40 blades uh, and uh, this is uh, how the rack uh, look like. So at the top of uh, each rack uh, there is a switch named uh, top of rack uh, tor switch. So uh, hosts uh, have uh, typically 40 gigabytes uh, ethernet connection uh, to tor switch each uh, host have uh, on uh, data center internal ip address so this is uh, the cisco nexus uh, uh, 3048 tor switch and uh, this is how it uh, look like in the real world let's have a look on the network elements in the data center in a single glance so we have the server racks uh, 20 to 40 server blades in uh, uh, which is the hosts and there is a, on the top of them a tor switch uh, having 40 to 100 gigabytes per second ethernet to blades uh, connection so uh, the tor switches are connected uh, to tier 2 switches uh, which uh, tier 2 switches are actually connected with uh, uh, at most 16 tor switches below and tier 2 switches uh, uh, this is uh, uh, all, the whole bunch of uh, servers uh, are uh, server racks uh, are connected with the tier 2 switches and uh, then there is a tier 1 switches uh, which are uh, connected to tire two switches and this is connectivity how they, they are connected to each other so we can see that each tire two switch is actually connected with e almost each of tire two switches this is the, the whole bunch of connectivity and the redundant links between the tire one and tire two switches 
then we have uh, the border router and uh, that border router is actually uh, each border router is connected with each of uh, entire one switches uh, and uh, that uh, border router uh, actually external link or uh, we can say gateway to uh, uh, that connects uh, the uh, whole data center to external uh, internet in data center there is a two type of uh, data traffic so one is the traffic flowing between the external clients and internal hosts this type of uh, traffic flow is called north to south traffic and uh, then there is another type of uh, traffic in the data center which is uh, the traffic flowing between the internal hosts they the hosts communicate with each other and coordinate with each other this type of uh, traffic flow is east west uh, traffic in the data center in data centers there is a large amount of uh, connectivity between tier 1 and uh, tier 2 switches uh, look at that uh, tier 1 uh, switches uh, are uh, connected with each and every tier 2 switches why we need this large amount of uh, connectivity and uh, this give us uh, the answer of the question that we raised in the earlier uh, in the challenge section uh, that we have a challenge of the data bottleneck and we have to make the links reliable so let's look at that how it handles these kind of problems if a large amount of the traffic are going to be in in the data center or and in the single link is used to handle that the bandwidth will be divided and there will be the data bottlenecks in there and the performance will be low so it will be reduced so uh, if uh, that link is actually broken uh, for um, some kind of reasons uh, so the reliability will be compromised so we have uh, a redundancy in the links we have a large amount of uh, links in there and uh, so we can handle those problems uh, let's uh, look at the example uh, let's see if uh, the host in the rack one want to talk uh, with uh, the host in the rack 11 how they talk about uh, with each other so um, one link they can use uh, is they can uh, go in the tire one switches uh, and um, tire two switches and then tire one and then it is redirected uh, to uh, host 11 uh, rack 11 uh, so that they can communicate with each other information so that link can be used in this way simultaneously and other link can be used uh, uh, the blue one in this uh, case and there is a whole uh, this path is different uh, and that uh, connection can use the whole bandwidth of that connection so we can handle the throughput in this way throughput issues uh, we have increased uh, throughput and another uh, benefit of this redundancy is uh, the reliability if some links are broken and other link can be used to access um, the uh, and uh, commu can communicate with the other rack hosts so in this way this help us Cloud data centers uh, provide many applications uh, concurrently and uh, they support a massive amount of uh, users uh, simultaneously. So, they have, there should be a mechanism of uh, load balancing uh, so that uh, the links uh, uh, should not be overwhelmed. Each application uh, is associated uh, with the public visible IP address to which external clients send their requests so load balancer jobs are here they distribute the requests to hosts balancing the load across the host and they also provide a net like functionality actually load balancers when a request come to the load balancers it translate the 
public IP address into the private IP address or internal IP address of a data center and redirect that request to a specific server. How load balancing is done in the data center? Let's have some visuals so that we can understand the load balancing mechanism in the data centers. So a client is requesting for an application or service to a specific IP address and the request comes in the data centers. It When it comes to the tier 1 switches, with the tier 1 switches, the load balancers are connected. In this figure, the load balancers is actually shown in uh, it is connected with uh, only one load balancer actually it is connected with each of uh, tire one switches a load balancer is uh, connected so the load balancers actually translates uh, the public ip address to uh, uh, in internal or private ip address and redirect it actually changes the port uh, numbers uh, to its uh, internal uh, uh, ports uh, which is used by the servers uh, so it redirects uh, that request uh, to the specific uh, server maybe that server uh, have to talk uh, with an other servers uh, mm, there is uh, uh, some east west uh, communication in there and uh, they uh, grab the information and then the results uh, are uh, redirected uh, or, uh, um, re uh, to the external uh, client so uh, to the ex uh, external uh, client uh, doesn't know about uh, what is uh, happening in the data centers and what is the internal uh, there is a, a bunch of uh, security uh, uh, which are uh, provided uh, by the load balancers uh, that it hides the internal uh, IP address uh, and uh, uh, just giving uh, the results uh, to external client so the protocol uh, innovation in the data centers we have a discussed so far uh, the architecture uh, and uh, how the elements are actually connected and there is a connectivity between uh, tier 1 and tier 2 switches and a lot of uh, things we have discussed so far but uh, in the real world uh, uh, the internet companies like google microsoft uh, facebook they have their own proprietary architecture and networks they have been developed for their data centers and uh, they want to public it we have a discuss a general idea and general trends that are followed by data centers so for routing purposes and management purposes SDN is widely used in the data centers and the resources and data is managed in this way the related services are and data is uh, placed uh, as closely as possible in the same rack or nearby racks uh, so that uh, there uh, would be the minimum tier 2 and tier 1 communication because uh, tier 1 and tier 2 communication is very very uh, uh, large part of the communication in the data centers uh, at most 70 to 80 percent of uh, the communication uh, which is the east west communication means that uh, the servers are actually talking to each other 80 70 to 80 percent of the time in the data center so this is the very concerning uh, that uh, we have to reduce that communication uh, have a uh, mm, uh, less number of uh, hops uh, uh, in that uh, uh, communication which is a home uh, occurring between the host to host so this is uh, uh, the whole bunch of thing we have discussed uh, this is uh, uh, this is it for today and uh, if you like the video please hit the like and subscribe button have a nice day